Hey guys, on here, we are back for episode seven of She-Hulk. Last episode, Just Jen spent a lot of time with Just Jen up until those final moments when Titania showed her true colors and then the ending bit with uh, this surveillance that is going on with this organization tracking Jen and as we see in those final moments of the episode are trying to figure out how exactly to get her blood. We see them building a brand new reinforced needle uh, to replace the one that was busted from the previous attempt with the wrecking crew. So can't wait to kind of figure that one out and get more into that. You know, is this linked to the power broker? We know it's this uh, intelligentsia group is involved in some way. Is this going to be setting up or tying into Captain America New World Order where the leader is actually going to be re like returning to the scene? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of questions floating around about that one. We also had uh, Mr. Invincible uh, popping up as well as our case of the week. And that whole thing was just hilarious. Nikki highlight of the episode. But guys, we only have three episodes left, so we're going to go ahead and hop into this one. So if you want to see the full-length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, because you access as well. It is in watch-along format, so you just see your own footage with the time code, same our reaction to the entire episode. You also get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel. You also get to put forth suggestions, then vote on what movies we react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind-the-scenes footage to try to make it worth your while, since you are going out of way to support the channel. But of course, I know nobody can do that, and a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos, because it really does go a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. If you're new, if you're tuning in for the first time, if you joined this reaction, I hope you stick around, hit that subscribe button, maybe even leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, that said, let's go ahead and hop into episode seven. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> That's how you start the day. Mm. I really hope this doesn't turn out to be some kind of plant or ploy. New Rockstars has me so paranoid. Like, I playfully joked about it, but they really made me, like, sketched out by this whole situation. <laughs> I've never been to a drive-in. Yeah, I don't know, man. It does seem too good to be true how things have been. Don't worry, he's probably making you like breakfast this time around where you were making the one dude breakfast. It's him. Or not. No. Uh. Oh, are you going down a rabbit hole on that intelligentsia site? I don't care what a bunch of losers say about me online. Can't even say it to my face because they know they get hoax smashed. No, I'm waiting for a text from Josh. What? Okay, that's enough for you. You need to set a limit. Mm. There's just literally no reason in this day and age to not respond to a text. Weddings, funerals, job interviews, silent retreats. I hope he's at all of those today. <laughs> This is me sometimes. I'm like, did I did I fuck up? What happened? What the hell? <laughs> oh, that was a neat transition. <sighs> Man, this is too relatable right now. <gasps> Spam. <laughs> Hello? Jennifer Walters, Chuck Donnellan. Mia Blonsky's parole officer. We got a malfunction alert on 
Blonsky's inhibitor. Did he turn into the abomination? We don't know, so I gotta go up to that wackadoo ranch of his. I was hoping you'd meet me there. Just in case, you know. I figure my chances of staying out of the ICU would be much greater if I had a Hulk there with <laughs> That's I'm true. I'm not your weekend plans, am I? No. Damn. Jen? Jen? Jen, 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 Jen. Jen, Jen, Jen. You're honking your horn at a, at a 10 foot tall lizard monster. So maybe put on your, your green suit. Put on my. It's definitely malfunctioning. Hey, do you think maybe you might have jostled it or? Come to think of it, I did get a jolt from an electric fence earlier. It's my favorite chicken. Princess Silk Feather was stuck. Your favorite chicken? Yeah. Mm. Favorite chicken. Great. Yeah. Um, well, I've already wasted half a Sunday on this expedition, so I'm going to get moving. Whoa, whoa! Oh, my God. Oh, no, her car! It's just two men working through their resentments in a safe environment. Manball, it was a weird lab experiment, don't ask. And I am El Aguila. I am not a matador. That would make the two of us fighting pretty cliche, no? He's working through some identity issues here. I am not the one with the issues. All right. I know exactly who I am. Fucking Char. How am I supposed to go home now? You know, sometimes... A life presents a teacher when there's a lesson to be learned. Think of this totally knackered Prius Prime as your teacher. Um, that was nothing. You just said nothing in response to a very straightforward yeah. question. <laughs> Give us a push to the garage, would you? Do I look like a mechanic? Oh. My name is Man Bull, not Mechanical Bull. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> How long have you been waiting to say that? Yeah, that felt very forced. You. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a good joke, but it sounds like one I would make. Hi, princess. So cute. Man, yeah, it is a nice place. I need to get some work done. So if you could get me a desk and some Wi-Fi. It's, it's, it's a bit of a hard ask. We don't carry it as a policy, you know, distractions from the outside and all that. Oh, and you have no reception anywhere either. Yeah, this is not how I want to spend my day. Maybe it's how you need to spend your day. Hmm. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> you remember El Aguila and Mambo? Uh-huh. Uh, this is Porcupine. He's a porcupine. And Saracen thinks he's a vampire. Wow, this is... Thinks he's a vampire? Or is a vampire? I'm just going to work over here in the one square meter of this property that actually has reception. Okay. Last session. We really explored Alejandro's struggles with his identity. Just because I am Spanish. People constantly assume that I am a matador. It's dehumanizing. Spanish is a language, not a nationality, so. You've never heard of Spain? <laughs> Let me see you as a matador. And, but that's triggering for me. I did do some light matadoring in college. Oh my God, dude, what? Remember how we talked about vulnerability and how important it is to the process? Yes. Yeah. How taking your suit off would be a great first step? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it well? You want to take your suit off today? I just feel safer with it on. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. No way. Whew. Jen, please. I really needed it, though. I was hurting for a year. That guy's here? You probably don't even remember who he is. Yeah, I don't. Previously on Tim. No, I don't care. We're doing it again. Um, previously on this guy. You're gonna strut around. Oh, fuck. This asshole and his friends attacked me behind my apartment. Yeah, Jennifer, darling, I'm gonna need you to sit in the calming chair right now. 
And so I realized I didn't need a magic crowbar to give me a false sense of power. All it did was make me and my boys act like idiots. We were some super villains or something. Oh, you attacked a woman four to one. You absolutely were super villains. I She'd rather sit here getting her kicks, listening to us, than working on herself. I'm not getting my kicks, and I'm fine. <laughs> mm. Look at you flying into a rage, throwing people across the room into perfectly stacked chairs. <laughs> Man, I think you want to get off your chest? Nope. Look at you. You are glued to that thing. I met a guy, mm. Josh, at a wedding. We went on a few dates and I thought it was going great. And then I haven't heard from him. And now I can't stop thinking about it. Well, what was the last thing you texted him? Um, that was fun. I can't stop smiling. Oh, oh my Yikes. God. What? Yikes. I can't stop smiling? It is thirsty and a cliche. Okay, that's not exactly the last thing I texted him. I'm sorry, what? Well, just now, because I was so worried. I hadn't heard from him in so long. For all I knew, he was in a ditch somewhere. Uh, what did you do? Uh... I think that we have to start considering the very real possibility that you were ghosted. Or he wanted your blood. No, not that. Man, stop talking about blood. Not everybody's your dad. Don't talk about my dad. <laughs> you know in high school, that friend that you have that's like cooler than you are? Like more attractive and athletic. And they get all the attention from everyone. I can turn into that person anytime I want to. And everyone pays attention when I'm this. It feels like cheating because... Would they like me if I didn't have all of this? Like, if I was just Jen, some of them don't. And that sucks for Jen, because Jen is great. So, like, I meet this guy who actually likes Jen, and that just felt good to know that. Then he ghosts me, and it sucks. All right, screw this guy. Where does he live? Let's go. <laughs> Josh has made an enemy of this entire group. Tonight, we ride. Whoa. You've been warned about using bioelectricity in group. Let's go find this Josh guy and suck out all his blood. Yes. Maybe this Josh thing hurts so much because you haven't been spending enough time with Jen. So I bet Jen is pretty damn great. Yeah. And tasty. Oh, <laughs> we know oh God. Somebody <laughs> <out>. Maybe. <laughs> guy who likes Jen Walters. Maybe there's a group of guys right here who would love to spend time with Jen right now. Do you believe that this group genuinely values the whole of you? I do. Hmm. So maybe you can stop using She-Hulk as a protective shield and trust us with Jen. Well, I will never forget any of you, honestly. Well, we, we made this for you. We love Jen and She-Hulk. We do. The gang. That's nice. When it says gang, it's not a literal gang. I mean, just make sure you make that clear to the parole board. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to come again. Oh, not till you get Wi-Fi. Okay. Three days earlier. Uh, we're gonna find out what happened. Oh, what if he got like kidnapped or murdered or something? Or he got her blood. God damn it. Cloned her phone. Oh, King. Oh, shit, he did. God damn it. Fuck you, Josh. <laughs> I think it was fun. I'm a little more lukewarm on this episode than some of the previous ones. Um, but I didn't think it was bad at all. Not all the jokes landed for me in this one, though. But I enjoyed the uh, character or the deconstruction of everything that's been going on. I like the time spent there kind of looking inward and doing exactly what she's ho been hoping everybody else has been doing, and that's focusing on Jen. Um, they brought Emil back into the plot. We actually got to see his retreat and meet a couple of like interesting faces 
along the way that are also kind of uh, tenants there going through some stuff. Um, we got to see one of the members of the Wrecking Crew in here, I guess trying to reform after that whole debacle went south, deciding to kind of at least seemingly, you know, try to work on why they thought that was an okay thing to do. Um, I don't know. Does that mean the Wrecking Crew's disbanded already? I don't know, but I definitely do relate to Jen's situation. When something feels a little too good to be true, sometimes you get a little like, oh shit. What's going on? And I'm definitely one of those people that gets a little too over analytical about situations. Like the the well, did I did I over did I type too much? Did I type too little? Re reading into what they said over and over, that sort of thing, not healthy. But I like the whole attention to that in this. This was a very character centric episode, which I do appreciate, and I did like it. Kind of following back on things that we've covered in the past. Um, Overall, it was a decent episode. I really don't have a whole lot to say about it. Because, uh, I mean, we didn't have a court case. We didn't have any, uh, we didn't break away for any time with any of the characters. Which, I guess, in it does kind of fit in with the actual aesthetic and theme of the episode, which is the retreat. You know, we didn't cut away to anything else. We did focus on Jen, her situation, her busted up car, which they were very... I don't know if like they were they got like a sponsorship or whatever with the Prius drop over and over, but they said Prius quite a lot <laughs> in the episode. Um, the the characters were pretty interesting. The porcupine guy, we got a vampire, a guy who okay, Emil says a guy who thinks he's a vampire, but we know vampires are real, and we know that you know Blade is coming, despite reports that you know productions get me in a little troubled right now, and they just lost their director. Um, when production's about to kick up in the next couple of months. So that's a little concerning, but I don't know. Overall, it was fun. It was fine. That bastard Josh, though. How dare he? Fuck. Damn, man. New Rockstars was right. I was, like, hoping. I was, like, it did seem a little odd, I guess, with his approach and then just how perfect he was. But part of me was just hoping somebody was finally seeing Jen for Jen. But no. No, they were not. So he got her DNA from the coitus. So I don't know what he bottled, because I feel like Jen would definitely have noticed that fucking needle. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know, considering we didn't see the, the transaction happening, but he sent the Hulk King, whoever that is, that text being all like syringe, green, blight, or whatever it was. I can't remember the actual emojis he used, but yeah. So we all, two episodes ago, uh, we got to get into the meat of this. Maybe that facility is where her and Daredevil are busting into towards the end. So it seems like Matt will be helping with the, the, the infiltration of this organization or whatever, just helping her kind of parse it out. Or maybe he's here investigating it as well. I'm very curious to see how he gets wrapped into this whole thing. I do have to say that I do like that they, that seemingly Emil is committed to this change and that this is kind of the direction that he's going. It's uh, almost like a Mike Barnes situation and I don't know why I kind of really become a, kind of attached to those. So there's another element of the episode that I did enjoy his tutelage, his mentorship throughout this whole thing. Also the, the group rallying behind Jen again, it's really endearing because especially I, th I think for most of us as viewers, we see Jen for Jen and she is a character, a person worth valuing as a whole, as both her, as she Hulk, as Jen, because they are, in fact, one and the same at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, guys, what did you think of the episode? Sound in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us in our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that and all my socials are down below. Follow me in each every one of those. If you want to see the full length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. And speaking of before you go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Kerr, Jason Coma, Philly Vane, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Raven McCann, Status Alive, and Jeffrey Hale. 
Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all next week with episode eight of She-Hulk. Take care, everybody.